All right, let me show you some of the, uh, the traps and hardware that I use out on my Bobcat trap line. I'm just gonna say right out the gate, I do not buy uh, bargain, bargain basement traps. Um, I buy the high-end hardware and I make sure that the hardware is set up um, to be as humane as possible. Um, they far exceed the best management practices. Um, so I, um, I've got a number of traps I've come to rely on um, for different applications um, on, on my Bobcat line or my Predator trap lines. Um, the first trap is a trap that's it's called a bridger and it's a bridger number two. And most of the bridgers I have, not all, but most of the bridgers I have were before the Cavens bought the company. Um, and one of the things I didn't like about the older traps was the uh, trap pan system. So I put a pause out trip uh, pan system on here myself. Um, and it's just the weight of the pan. I set them up. I mean, it it's, doesn't take much. I did that because this is a number two size trap. I want this to be good on foxes as well. Um, so I... Um, I build my own chain assemblies, and all of my chain assemblies are pretty much the same. They're, they're 18 inches long. Um, I use crunch-proof swivels. I use heavy-duty J-hooks. I use heavy, uh, usually number three, American Straight Link chain. Um, I use stop shock springs. Um, you know, that, 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 that helps out a lot in reference to, to injury with the animal when they're pulling against the chain. Um, and, of course, it's got my trap tag on there. I'm lucky to live in a state where we don't have to put our name and address and all. I can just put a little dinky tag on there. It's just a, a five-digit uh, trapper's identification number. Um, but all of my all of my traps will have that chain assembly on it. But this is a Bridger number two with the Pause I Trip Pan system. Um, now, when the Cavens bought the company, one of the things they did, one of the first things they did was change that pan system. Um, and they went to a dogless trap, and that's what this is. Um, and, you know, I've got a few of these, and this is a number three. It's a size bigger. Generally, what you want for Bobcats is a number three. Um, but I've got the, the chain assembly on here the same, um, and uh, that's, a, that's a very fine trap. When I invest in the future, this will most likely be the trap I'll buy the next couple dozen of. Um, one of my favorite traps, which I, that might change the more I use these number three bridgers, but one of my favorite traps I ever used is a Montana trap. And it's a Montana number three. Love this trap. It's really the same concept as the bridger number three it uh has a, a, a its own dogless trap uh, uh trap pan system um i love a dogless trap um and this one has been very good to me over the years in fact i use this trap um i've got a couple dozen of them i don't think you can even get them anymore I, i'm not sure if you can get montana traps anymore but i use them uh, i use a lot for beaver trapping i've caught beaver held them in the back leg but most of the time the way i set up for beavers a front leg uh, application I um, mean, they do just very well even for beaver trapping. Um, just like with the previous traps I've showed you, it's the offset laminate jaws. Again, I'm trying to maximize. I want them to be as humane as possible. Uh, base plated, D-ringed, center swivel, um, you know, four coil. That's pretty much the, the way it goes. So the traps I, I'm showing you, like I said, I don't think we can get these anymore. So most likely I'm going to be going with these Bridger number threes in the future. Um, that's probably going to be, you know, my, my next uh, go-to trap. Uh, and I'm going to continue to use these Montanas for as long as I can. Um, now we're going to get into, and, and those traps, I will say like the Bridger traps, and even the Montanas to a point, even though I'm afraid of losing them because I can't get any more, I'll put those on public ground. That's that's my public ground traps uh, for the most part. Okay, so when I get on private ground where I don't have to worry about trap theft so much, that's when we get into some traps. These are expensive but they're worth every set, in my opinion. This is Minnesota Trap Brand, uh, Minnesota uh, Trap Line Products. Uh, this is a MB650. I have dozens of these, and I will run these things. You, you talk about a trap that's going to hold Bobcat. It's, it, it's got a giant pan on it, so it's great for Bobcat, but it also does a fantastic job with any, any big old coyote that, that gets in your trap. You ain't got to worry about it going anywhere. It's going to be there waiting on you. Um, if you get them above the, you know, up in the pad, they're good. But what I love about this trap for bobcats, and this is just a phenomenal trap, uh, it, 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 as you can see, it's got the springs that are just the wire springs. It comes out of the ground really hard, really fast, but it's got this giant pan. I love this this pan system on this thing. Um, it's really, really good trap. Uh, like I said, expensive, same chain assembly, uh, expensive trap, but I've invested in dozens of these and and I don't regret it a bit. They, they're very, very reliable, and I'll put them on public ground where I don't have to worry about trap theft. 
Okay, another trap, like when I go to private ground, I'm trying to get permission. Sometimes you talk to people about trapping and they want the predators gone. They want the coyotes gone. They want the bobcats gone and such. But they're a little bit worried about how humane it is to trap. So whenever I get somebody that's kind of on that line, that's asking some real good questions about what I can do to be as humane as possible, I, I offer them or I explain to them that one of the things I can do for them if they're apprehensive is use a rubber jaw trap. And when I use a rubber jaw trap, there's, there's one trap that comes to mind. And that's J.C. Connors Coyote Jake Trap. I don't know why he marks it as a coyote trap. It's, it's thing once you get it, once you get it adjusted right, you get that pan adjusted right. This thing is an amazing, amazing bobcat trap. Um, every bit as good as the MB650s. Giant jaw spreads. Got the same springs. Comes out out of the ground hard. Huge pan. Amazing, but it's rubber jawed. And it seems like when you start talking to a landowner. Uh, or, or somebody that you're trying to get permission from, uh, a, a farm manager or something like that, and you start talking about rubber jawed traps, man, it can get you on that ground. They can change their mind and say, you know what, yeah, I, I like the idea of using a rubber jawed trap. Uh, to them, that sounds much more humane, and uh, and it can sometimes get you on that ground where otherwise you might not have been able to get permission. So that's a fine trap. Uh, again, an expensive trap. I, last time I tried to get my hands on some, there's, there's a waiting list. It can be very hard to get. Um, but he makes a fantastic pro product. Again, that's J.C. Connor, um, and it's the uh, Coyote uh, Jake Trap. Uh, so to talk a little bit about uh, the next thing that's very important in trapping is your staking system. How are you going to stake that trap and anchor that trap to the ground? Um, that's very important. Um, so generally speaking, what I'll do is I've got a bunch of these two foot long, half inch thick uh, rebar stakes. Um, some of them I have have just the nut on the top. Some of them have the washer on the top. I prefer the washer, but the way I set them up, it doesn't really matter much. You can get these plates. These are, you know, cross um, staking plates. Um, br brings a J-hook out of the top of it, or you can just, you know, set it up however you want in reference to the anchor in there at the bottom. But you just set these things up and drive these stakes in the ground. And you, you, you cross stake them. So when you're cross staking them, the J hook comes up and then the J hook clinches down and then you can attach the J hook to your settlement. When you cross stake a set, I don't care if it's soft ground, with two foot long half inch rebarb stakes like this, it ain't going anywhere. Um, if you don't want to fool with that kind of weight out in the field, which is certainly understandable, it's got some weight to it, you know, you can go with 18 inch rebarb. I wouldn't go any shorter than that unless you're in some super hard rocky ground, maybe 12 if you're putting two in cross staking, but, but 18 is the smallest that I own. Um, but I prefer the, the 24 inch. Um, with that being said, I have slowly started uh, utilizing this staking system more than this staking system. This is a, a cable staking system. It's got the super bullet thing at the end of it. I think it's like that just because the, the end of it's actually flared up uh, on the end so it catches more dirt, it, it holds a little bit better. But that's the staking system itself. It's just this bullet. It's got some flares on the side. You don't have to get the super bullet type. You can get the regular bullet type if you're in hard ground. Um, you know, you, these things hold nearly as well. I mean, these do hold a little bit better, but these hold really good, especially if you're in semi-hard ground or hard ground. Um, but I use these, and um, it's got like a beveled end on the end of it. You have your, your stake driver. You just slide it up in there. It, it's beveled as well to where it matches up. Stick that thing in the ground, take your hammer, drive it down in real good. And then once you get it in there, you have your trap attached to this cable. Okay, this cable, I'm sorry, I'm telling you wrong. You have your trap attached to, to this cable. And this is the cable that comes off the side of the bullet. And the reason is, whenever you pull back up on that, and I don't even set my own stakes. I let the animal set the stakes, but if you want to set the stakes, either way, whenever an animal or yourself pulls back up on that after you've driven it into the ground, it pulls that thing, you know, after you drive it down, this just pops right out, and then you've got your trap attached here, either you or the animal pulls up on it to set that stake, it makes that stake come up like this. So I'll show that in this other camera here real quick. It just, it, it makes that stake, when you pull it up, it makes it come parallel to the top of the ground. And by doing that with these flares or even just with the bullet, just that against, it's very hard to pull that up out of the ground. Very hard, especially hard ground uh, that I trap in or semi-hard ground. 
it's dang nigh impossible. I have to have a, I'll show you here in a little bit, but you gotta have a, a special stake puller to get these things out of the ground, and it's a, it's a piece of hardware. But this is a really good staking system if you wanna keep your, your trapping bag light when you go out in the field and you're setting a lot of steel. Again, I use, I'm using it more and more. I'm fading out the rebarb stakes, except for in places that's just mega hard ground where I'm having a hard time. Because you can mess up your stake drivers a little bit if it's super hard. You can flare up these beveled ends. Um, so it's gonna, it's got to be super, super hard ground before I use the rebarb stakes anymore. I really like this stake system. Um, for attaching stuff, I have a lot. I've hunt hundreds of these uh, ring swivel or. Uh, uh, almost like a keychain ring but they're just a big old ring that you can buy um, and then this is technically the same concept it's just a cable cross staking system you can drive a stake into one in here stake into one here there have your trap attached in the middle and it does the, it does the same thing it works really well because when something pulls up on it it's just pulling the tips of those rebarb stakes in so just, just to show what that looks like it's a like I said just like a split ring and then another cable system sorry you can buy them just just like that I, again i have hundreds of these things i use them for all kinds of stuff not even trapping related i just love these things um got a lot of practical uses one of the other things i like to do if, I ha if i'm building a real nice cat cubby or i have a real nice hollow log i want to keep using it over and over and over and over again you don't want to stake that animal right on that set because a bobcat's going to be clawing and biting and flipping and jumping and it'll just tear your set to pieces those type sets i'll either set on a slide cable which I like to use eighth inch uh, seven by seven aircraft cable um, you can buy that stuff hundreds of, of feet at a, you know, in a row um, but most of the time I use a drag JC Connor the same people that makes this trap makes an excellent drag I should have brought that out to show it to you it, it's it's this is a great drag too this is what Minnesota trap line products uh, had out um, when I was buying drags but I have quite a few of the drags that uh, the JC Connor makes if you want even a better drag, you should look at what he has. It's, it's slightly better than this. But this has always worked well for me. It's a good heavy drag. It's got good heavy chain on it. I got usually 8 to 10 foot of chain on it. Um, you know, attach that to your trap, sling it out, cover it up with leaves or debris or whatever. Bobcat's not even going to know it's there, not even care. When it gets caught, it's going to pull just far enough away from your set. This is going to get tangled up in something. Well, the chain's going to get tangled up in something, and it's going to be sitting there bouncing around waiting on you or sitting there trying to hide from you when you come up. But your set... You, you won't lose the integrity of your set. You'll still have that set intact. So all you got to do is just dispatch your cat, bring all that back over, rebed it, remake it, and you're good to go. Um, so that's another part of the staking system. Uh, going back to this, uh, to this where I was telling you you had to have a special puller to get this out of the ground. I own two, but I brought my favorite one out to show you. Uh, this thing is heavy. I'm not going to lie. It's very heavy. Um, the way it works is, you know, you have this other cable that's on the end of the bullet. So your bullet's set, your stake is set parallel top of the ground. You hook this to that as it sticks just a little bit up out of the ground, and then just if you just lift it up, it'll come up out of the ground. It torques it out of the ground. So you, you basically take that stake that's set in parallel to the top of the ground, and then you pull it from the rear of the stake, and it pulls it back up perpendicular and it brings it back up in through the hole that you drove it into. So it allows you to pull that stake. Um, but you'll definitely need a stake puller if you decide to use those kind of stakes. These things are heavy, cumbersome, but you know, when you come around time to, to have to pull your sets, you know, it's the only way you'll get them out of the ground. You're not gonna get those things out of the ground with a, with a crowbar or something like that. I can take a mini crowbar and get these, get these uh, rebarb stakes out of the ground all day long, but you ain't gonna do it with, with those stakes, with that staking system, that cable staking system. All right, so I gotta show you a tool that, there's two tools that I absolutely have to have when I trap. I, you know, I, I, I can't imagine going out and doing trapping without these two tools. One is a good Matic. Basically, it's like a, it's like a four service ax. It's just smaller, it's got a smaller blade on it for cutting and stuff. What I love about this Matic is you can go in, it's heavy, you can go in, you can dig yourself out a trap bed, no matter how hard the ground is. Say you come across some roots while you're in there digging that trap bed, you can spin that thing over, chop those roots out, turn it back over, dig that bed on out. You can really save yourself a lot of time with a good Matic on your trap line. Just to show you what that looks like on the other camera, it's, it's, it's an excellent tool for the trap line. Can't see myself going out without it. 
and then this tool here this is a groundhog digging tool and it's it, it's got three uses one is it has an end on it that's hollow that you can jam in the ground and you can start digging dirt holes and it makes a pretty good size dirt hole you can see how it's bladed out so you can make dirt holes whenever you're out in the field i like to run dirt hole sets for bobcats especially when i'm trying to catch cats and foxes or i'm on private property and i want to make the landowner happy and catch a bunch of coyotes as well you dig out your trap beds with this thing you know uh you may have got the worst of it with that this one kind of help you find it out a little bit and then when you're around to driving in your rebarb stakes or driving in your stake driver which i also have i forgot to show you have this big long stake driver i use it sometimes especially when i'm beaver trapping because i'll use that cable staking system on soft ground in the bottom of a creek or river or something and i'll, I'll use this to, to drive it in there um, as well but um but you, you, it's another stake driver but when you're you, you can use this to pound in your stake drivers or your rebarb stakes um and dig your trap beds and make your and make your dirt holes prior to getting this i'd carry a mini sledgehammer and i'd have to carry this doodad to make my dirt hole set you know to make my dirt holes nice and pretty no longer have to do that with a groundhog digging tool which is a really nice tool when i'm going around and i'm pre-prepping my set locations or something you know i've got i'll have my matic I have another one over here. I seem to lean to taking this one. That one I'll take when I'm out on the line during season. But if I do pre-season prep, for some reason I migrate to this one. It's just got a just a giant blade on it, so I can get out there and really just really get in good uh, prepping my set locations. But um, so I'll get my matic out, you know, and I'll have that with me when I'm digging my sets and stuff. But one of the things that the matic can't do if you're pre-prepping your sets or whatever is make that dirt hole or dig out up in the inside of like a hollow log or a rotten log or whatever you're trying to, to dig out more like a cubby uh, for a cat cubby or something. So when I'm out, I'll take this thing out when I'm doing my, I've had this for ages. Um, I started you, I actually bought it for mink trapping, but found out that it's really good, you know, when you're out there pre-prepping your sets to dig in, you know, to help make your cubbies look good up underneath, you know, up inside your cubbies. So I really like having this uh, tiny spade shovel. It's, it's all metal, heavy duty, last a lifetime for sure. Um, so uh, I think I pretty much showed you everything with the exception of whenever you're working with your traps, you know, you've got these J hooks and you're attaching these J hooks to cables, to your, to your, your cross staking systems, uh, slide wire, slide cable, whatever you might be hooking, you're going to be hooking with J hooks. So you got to have a good J hook tool. Um, you know, that's a must and it's good to have a couple pairs of them in case you, you lose one because you, you got to have this for opening and closing your J hooks. And I like this particular one better than those little aluminum ones. Uh, I break those things all the time because I, I run the heavy duty J hooks. This one right here I've had for a long time. It really holds up good. Anytime you're working with big thick annealed wire or you're working with, you know, eighth inch, you know, uh, aircraft cable or something, you need to have a good pair of cable cutters slash wire cutters. Um, and I really have enjoyed this set. This set does absolutely wonderful. So you definitely want to have you some good cable cutters while you're out there. I can't imagine going out and doing trapping with the systems that I utilize without having those. All right, so the last thing I'm going to finish up with is uh, something that I came up with. I never read an article about it. I never saw it on a trapping video. I've never, this is something I just thought of on my own. Um, I will say I got some inspiration from Clint Locklear. I was watching one of his videos where he was m literally welding. He was using giant traps for bobcats, and he was welding pieces of metal on the trap pans to fill in the in inside of the jaws of the trap as much as possible because a bobcat has a big fat paw. Uh, you, can, you can hold a bobcat by one toe, um, so you don't have to worry about getting that a smaller pan where you can get that trap. That's why I like, that's why I like this big MB and this giant pan and this big old a coyote jake print uh, trapping these big pans i like that big pan don't really have that much with the montanas or the number two bridgers the number three bridger even i mean it's got a good size pan on it but uh not like i said you can fill up that whole inside jaw of that that trap with the pan if you like people use trap pan covers you know to keep their peat moss or their dry dirt or whatever they have going up underneath their pans so something I come up with after I saw where he was welding that stuff, I was like, man, I don't want to weld onto my trap pants. I have a little welder, and I, I have a background in welding. It was my, uh, took it in Votec, learned how to do it. Um, I, I could have done that, but I thought, man, I, I don't know that I necessarily want to go to all that trouble. Um, so I got to thinking, and I come up with this. And this should be, uh, you know, if I was charging you for this video, it'd be worth the price of the video, because uh, it has been awesome for me. Um, magnets. 
you can buy magnets, you can buy sheets of magnets, and you can cut those magnets to form fit whatever trap you're using to be just inside the jaws so that the jaws, it doesn't interfere with the jaws opening and closing. And you could set them on there, and, and me, that's what I do. I take these magnets and I just I set them up along the edge of them, and they're incredible trap pan covers. They're dark gray, uh, that you know, so they blend in really good with everything. And uh, they're always just kind of laying there waiting on you in your trap circle. You know, whenever you get there, there's a, you, there, you can still see them just laying there on the ground. You just reuse them. Um, so magnets. I have sheets and sheets of these magnets, and I have some of them that are pre-cut out. Um, so that's that's just kind of that's my tip. Uh, something that all the years I've come up with, I, I came up with on my own, and I've used it for many years, and it's worked out really well. Like I said, if nothing else, I believe that when a bobcat steps on and maybe's off the pan just a little and hits that magnet on the side of the pan, you can get that trap to fire or nothing else. It'll keep that, uh, it's a good trap pan cover. It'll keep that soil and stuff from going underneath your trap pans. They do an excellent job for that. Um, so that's pretty much everything in reference to uh, my hardware and what I use out in the field when I'm bobcat trapping or predator trapping. Um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can use. Um, I'm a big fan of Minnesota Trapline products. Uh, that's pretty much a one-stop shop for me, but there is a, a company called F&T Fur Harvesters Trading Post that's, uh, that's also got a, a very good-looking catalog, um, got some really good products, uh, and they're, they're really, really coming along well. So I think between F&T Fur Harvesters Trading Post and Minnesota Trapline products, you can pretty much find anything you want in reference to hardware. Um, if you want to get into snaring and stuff, I don't snare bobcats, I do snare coyotes and wire woven fence uh, where they're dipping under wire woven fence on farms and such but uh, if you want to get into snaring bobcats and stuff uh, uh, I know the snare shop used to be a, a really good source uh, and uh, I think there's something called Dakota snare and trapping supply something like that you can probably get you some snaring stuff as well but uh, but if you want to buy traps I don't recommend just me I'm not endorsed by any of these people at all um, I've paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for my traps and stuff um, but I would consider this Bridger number three for bobcat trapping starting out of the gate. I, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing trap. Get you some stop shock springs if they don't already have them on them when you buy it. And, um, and, uh, that'll be an excellent bobcat trap for you. If you want to go more high end, you know, if you can get your JC Connor Jake traps, I highly recommend it. If not, Minnesota brand traps are excellent. I mean, they're going to last you a lifetime if you take care of them. And uh, they're a beast of a trap. It's going to hold the biggest of bobcats. And you see on these trapping videos, you know, this is a four-part series. And on the last part, you'll see, you know, you, you see multiple upper 30-pound bobcats. But you see one that, that breaks 40 pounds, my biggest bobcat ever at 41 and a half pounds. Um, and it was actually caught, of all traps, it was caught in, this, in a bridger number two. It was on public ground. Uh, and it, But it was caught so high up on the pad, it, I mean, it was way up on the, above the pad. Um, and that trap did a good job holding it. Uh, so you kind of get what you pay for with your hardware. I'm at one of my favorite areas in my neck of the woods. This is an area that I generally finish my trapping seasons at. Um, I really love it up here for multiple reasons, not just because um, there's a high concentration of bobcats in this area, but just the fact that it's very remote and here at the north end of this lake, I get to see a lot of wildlife. I've seen, I've seen a lot of foxes and bobcats and such while checking my lines. Um, I've gotten to see uh, a lot of critters that work the edge of the lake, a mink and, and, and beaver and stuff like that up here, a lot of different ducks. Uh, the main thing I enjoy is, uh, is getting to see um, bald eagles. Um, there's at least one aviary up at this end. I believe there's another one further down the lake. Um, but um, I saw six juvenile bald eagles just on my way up up to here. Um, and one of them was actually flying this way whenever I pulled up. I was going to get a picture of it, but the positioning of the sun, it was totally backlit, so it wasn't good for a picture. But um, just a couple minutes ago, an eagle was flying over right here. I've gotten many pictures of them over on that ridge over there. But... Um, Anyway, I, uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, one of my favorite sets, which is a trash pile set. A bobcat trash pile set is extremely effective. It would, it would be my second favorite set if it wasn't for the fact that it's very prone to getting a back foot or a back paw um, uh, catch. 
So I, I don't really like that very much, um, you know, in reference to being able to hold your cats. But um, other than that, it's extremely effective. You just want to use good hardware um, to try to hold your cats if you get them in that back foot because they can really lunge on you more. Um, but with a trash pile set, what that mimics is, is when a bobcat's hunting, sometimes they'll make a kill and it's just an opportunistic kill. They might not be that hungry. So what they'll do is they'll just cover that kill up so that when they get hungry, they can come back to it later. Um, and they'll cover it up with, and sometimes they'll actually make a kill, eat some of it, but there'll just be some left over that they want to come back to and finish off later. So what they'll do is they'll cover it up with leaves and grass and just debris that's in the immediate area of the kill. Um, and they're very meticulous at that. They'll, they'll, they'll cover it up very well. They'll take their time, um, get it covered really well, and then they'll, they'll spray it with urine. And, um, and basically they're saying, hey, stay away from this. This is my, my, my kill. And then they'll leave and come back to it later when they're ready. I don't think they go too far off from it. And the reason why I say that is I've gotten video clips of, of bobcats defending bait stations that I've established. Um, and I'm going to share at least one of the videos with you. I know I've got one where there's a, a bobcat that's defending. Um, uh, I placed a beaver carcass down for a bait station, and it had been coming for a couple days. Um, what I do is I'll, I'll put a beaver carcass down, set a camera up, see if there's any cats working that bait. And then if there is, I'll go in and set a trap, catch one cat, and then pull out. Um, so um, what I had done is set a camera up, and... Before I got in there to check it, I actually had an interaction between a bobcat and a couple coyotes, full-grown coyotes come in, and it actually defended the, uh, the bait station from the coyotes. Um, I have another video bite I'll share with you of a breeding pair of bobcats that were coming into a, one of my bait stations. Again, didn't have a trap there. I was just getting established. And they would come in and they would cover it up, um, leave, come back, feed a little bit, cover it up, leave, come back. Um, and at one point they came back, on, I believe it's snowing in the video, I think there's some bobcat vocalization in the video, and at one point they come back um, um, and, and, and feed on it, and I, I ended up pulling the video on it and saw where they were coming in so regularly, set a trap, and I actually caught one of the cats in the first night. Um, well, when I had that cat caught, a couple coyotes came in and harassed that cat while it was in the trap. I'll, I'll share that video with you also. Um, but uh, something cool about seeing interactions between bobcats and coyotes um, on video. Um, so, the uh, main part of this is I wanted to show you how to construct a trash pile set so that you can use it on your lines. So, I'll show you that now. Alright, I'm into an area that's, that's been very good to me over the years. I actually lived for a decade, about a mile that way. Um, I'm on public ground now, but there's private ground between here and where I lived, and I had permission to be on that private ground. I still do to this day. I just left from up there. I've got a number of cameras set up there. Um, and I'm very grateful to be on that ground. It's a lot of great memories are still being made. Um, but uh, this is just a small clearing that is very, very thick with autumn olive along the edge. We're in the third week of March now. It's not trapping season. And you can see the autumn olive is already starting to to bloom well to, to, to bloom out just a little bit um, one of my favorite things you know after it buds out like that and it starts to bloom one of my favorite uh, smells in nature is is an autumn olive bloom but uh, they're definitely budding out already we've had a little piece of warm weather here recently uh, it's actually in the 50s now um, but I've had a couple cameras in this area for a few weeks I haven't checked them yet um, I'd actually set them here because I've killed gobblers uh, on these ridges down in here um, and I just wanted to see, you know, what was coming through this clearing. Um, but I decided to come here today to demonstrate to you guys, um, you know, constructed uh, trash pile set. And then a constructed, um, I call it a, uh, it's a post set. It's a feather, a feather reed grass, I believe is what it is. A type of feather reed grass. I, I think its technical name might be little blue stem. I know it's an invasive species to my state. Uh, it's not, you know, from, you know, native to here. Um, but it's very plentiful in and around where, um, where I trap. So let me give you a close-up of what it looks like. And so this is what the set would look like for me. There's a game trail that comes out from down there. And it runs all the way up. And it goes the, right out to the middle of the clearing. All the way out that point out that way. So again with bobcat trapping, there's some kind of rodent hole right here that's got some fresh digging and activity. I'm not quite sure what's living in that groundhog or what it might be but there's a rodent hole there that's and, and something's been tearing up the ground in and around it 
But um, so right here, uh, um, you know, I use this grass. I just bring it in here. You can just cut it off and and take it to where you like to take it. It's the only thing that looks like this in this clearing, so it really stands out. Um, then I put feathers in here. That the type of feathers I'm using here is a mix of uh, geese feathers and turkey feathers. Again, you want to use something that's legal, that you legally harvest, um, you know, on your sets, if you're allowed to do so, you know, if you're allowed to use feathers where you trap. Um, you don't want to use, you know, don't don't see some hawk that's been hit by a car and then go and pick up the hawk and pluck it and come out here and put hawk feathers down. A game warden finds it or a U.S. Forest Service law enforcement or something, and you're going to be in a, you're going to be in a bad way. Um, I like to use, there's a woody, stemmy plant that we have a lot of. Um, around where I trap that's got a membrane on the inside. I don't know if it's showing up very good on camera But it's a membrane up in the inside of that. That is a great lure holder I mean it just you put lure on it just soaks it up. It's almost like foam up in there um, So it's really that's what that's what I like to use in these sets I would actually have it more over this way at an angle um, If this was actually gonna have a trap on it I would lure it on that and then I would spray some urine on it Again, trap side. I usually put like a dirt hole or a small hole here to make it look like something's mousing around in the base of this. You can pick this whole thing up and smear bait or whatever you want to smear up underneath it if you like. Um, and then here you would, you know, bed your bed your trap. Again, it, the trap would be pretty much on the trail. Um, but you would bed your trap, make sure nothing's coming over to keep the bobcat from coming in where the trap would be. Um, but you'd, you'd bed your trap right there. And uh, you can, you know, stake it however you like, uh, rebarb stake crawl stake, cable stake, or run a chain out to a drag and just cover it up with grass, however you want to do that. But that's what that set would look like constructed. Lured, urine, possibly bait on the underside of it. Mouse hole, trap bedded, stands out, um, and can be very effective because this is right where they may walk um, if they're coming down through the middle of this game trail. Now that I'm standing up, you might be able to see the game trail a little better going out through there. So, if this was actually going to be a set, of course I have a game camera there and that's why I decided to set it here but if I was actually trapping this it would be you know it would probably be over in this location to as close to the game trail as I could get it um, and uh, what a trash pile set would look like is where a bobcat's come in and it's actually covered something up it's it's been hunting around here it's killed a rabbit or it's killed a bird that's been roosted on this autumn olive or the cane break over in the creek past the autumn olive there and it's not been able to finish eating or it's just not hungry enough to finish it off or and it's decided to bury it, basically to protect it from avian predators so it can come back to it later. Um, so, you know, what you do is just gather up materials, which it didn't, took me less than five minutes to gather this up. It's got leaves in it, it's got wire grass in it, it's got pine needles in it, it's got all kinds of, you know, just debris from around here, uh, uh, autumn olive leaves, um, all kinds of stuff mixed up in it uh, from, from the immediate area. Just pile it all up. Uh, if I'm if I'm going to use a bait holder at this particular location, I like to use sheep, sheep's wool. I actually have some in the backpack there, but I would take sheep's wool, put the bait on the sheep's wool, and stick it under here. Sheep's wool itself is very attractive to, to any animal that's going to eat meat. Um, it's a very uh, attractive smell to both canines and felines. So, um, of course, I would have my, my stemmy stick here with the membrane on the inside. Uh, some people, you could actually buy those little egg deals wooden egg deals and put your lure in that and set it, set the egg down in there because it almost looks like a almost looks like a nest here again you'd put the hole um you know in the back to look like something's mousing around bed your trap out on the leaf side the lure side and the urine side of the thing and you know you, you definitely want to have your trap all this stuff on this side because the bobcat's going to come up it, it'll put its nose right on that um, with lure on it but you want them to work this side of it and that's why i've got a backing you want some kind of backing to keep them from working the back area uh, of your of your trash pile set um, so that's what this set would look like constructed and I'll leave it kind of like this uh, you know just visual attractant um, for the next uh, few weeks just to see if any turkeys are working through here or any bobcats are working through here um, and if so I might might trap it next year uh, it's always been a really really great spot and I haven't hit it in a, in, in a couple years now so I'm sure there's bobcats in here um, so let me come back over here Set the camera up. Talk to you guys about one more thing, okay? So, you know, I've got trees right here uh, 
set here, a set here, this would be a perfect location to hang a feather. And I've done it many times over the years in conjunction with sets that I've had here. So you definitely want to think about hanging a feather up here. If you're in a state that you can't hang, use feathers on your sets or your, you know, there's a regulation against using, you know, animal parts, you know, hanging in the breeze, then you can use, uh, you can use, uh, I know a, a professional trapper, uh, Clint Locklear, he'll use those uh, CDs. He'll just go buy a pack of CDs, silver CDs, and drill a hole in, in along the edge of one of them and tie it off and hang it from a tree limb and let that CD just sit there and spin. Um, he traps big ranches, even down the Texas area, with big long roads along the edge of thick cover like, like this. And uh, he'll, he'll hang those CDs up, and he says it draws bobcats from long distances up to where his set would be alongside those roads. So you can use a CD as an eye attractant. Just remember that's going to really stand out to humans. You don't want to be in an area without trap theft issues. Um, and then for, for your set locations, you can use holophil. You know, it's it's synthetic. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not an animal part. So it would comply with those regulations, I'm sure. So you can use holophil in and around. It's white. It would be a, a, a visual attractant to the uh, to, uh, to a, a bobcat or a canine or something. So uh, just something to think about there as far as alternatives go. Uh, to make sure that you're legal in the area that you're that you're trapping um so i just wanted to, to mention that this is a perfect scenario because a bobcat could be working the edge of the creek here edge of the drainage here edge of the thick you know autumn olive here not necessarily on this game trail even up on the ridge up there coming off either one of these points could possibly see you know a feather or something down here in the breeze get its attention and get it to come down here and possibly get on one of these sets This is one of my favorite areas to trap cats. I've caught more cats here than anywhere else I've ever trapped. I always have a lot of luck here. I've taken as many as five out of here one season. Um, I've only had sets down here. This is my second check and I've got a cat up here. It's back foot caught. So I'm gonna have to tippy up and tiptoe up to it and see uh, see how well it's caught. I'm excited about this catch because I have a camera set up in front of it that does uh it's gonna be doing one minute video bites so I might be able to have some video of it actually getting caught. It'll be the first time I've done that. It's got a little feather there. Cats are up the trail just to the left staring at me now. Um, so I'm gonna take the catch pole up there and maybe take a couple pictures and see if I can't get the catch pole on it. I don't like a back foot caught cat, and that's not a small cat either. It's not a big one, but it's average size. I don't know how well it's caught. 
I had a huge one pull out of a back foot catch not too long ago. See, it's a huge catch circle, and he's only towed. I better get off here and try to get the catch ball on him. I met a location that's been real good to me over the years. This is only about a quarter mile from, from one of our houses. Uh, we've got a townhouse here at the lake, and uh, I've spent a lot of time back here and I've, I've caught more cats from this location or this area right here, not particularly this set location. I've caught cats here, but just this, this area right here than any other area that I've trapped. Um, just to show you a little bit about the surrounding area, there's a, a ridge that comes down into the clearing there, the point of a ridge. There's a rocky draw here in the middle. And then there's another uh, another ridge that comes down in the clearing there. And then, you, know, you can see the clearing is not very big, but it's really thick along the edges. And, uh, you know, anything, anything working that, uh, that edge right there, I want to be able to look over and see this set. You can see how well that feather's doing in the wind. Uh, that thing will spin and flop around and... Uh, when the wind really gets kicked up there, it looks like the propeller of a, a boat or something, the way it spins around. Um, so there's a lot of motion, a lot of eye appeal um, to stimulate the, uh, to visually stimulate a, a cat or a coon or something working the area. And of course with the, with the big bleach bone and a feathered up uh, trash pile set there at the base of that tree. I put the trash pile at the base of the tree just because I've got a beaver leg nailed to the base of the tree just to hold the bait there. And then got some hay and, and such on top. Got it feathered up, feathered up real good. And, and uh, just a lot of eye appeal for, for a cat or a coon that might be working the area. Got a set up in here in a little open area of this brushy field at the bottom of some finger ridges that run down into it. Had a scent post set up here. This grass is my backing with a dirt hole in it. Got just a real nice cat right here. Big cat. I don't see how well I got him caught. He's a big one. I don't think he's caught real well. Couldn't quite see, but had a scent post back behind him there. You can see the brush. Had a feather hanging up right there. A little bit of cat urine. Down in the bottom of the hole. He's not happy to see me. I'm trying to see how well he's caught. He's not caught well at all. Here's a remake on that cat set. Uh, started off as a scent post, but now it's starting to look more like a trash pile set. Uh, got a little hole dug in the bottom there, and I've got uh, feathers mixed in with the grass, turkey feathers. In the back of the hole, I got some of Tim Caven's predator bait. I've got some bobcat urine sprayed on the grass. They're in behind the hole. Trap bedded in the front. I've got a little rock there as a stepping guide. It's right here at the base of this tree. About two feet up in the tree, there's a little, little knot coming off, a little broken limb. I've got uh, a real strong skunky call lure on that. On that right there, it's elevated, it's real strong, it'll carry on the wind well. And a little bit further than I usually do, I've got the feather right out here. And the reason why I put it out here, let me show you what's going on with this, is because of the field of view from this particular point. You know, I want this to draw a cat in from a, from, from a distance possibly. And you see much better, there's actually a trail coming down this way. From way out that way, there's actually a creek bottom out there. And a trail comes finger ridge comes down into the field right here and then the trail comes down by the feather continues right on by the set and it goes on out that way which is the way I walk into the set as you can see it's it's real thick up in here I've been trapping this right here for a number of years now I've caught a lot of cats out of this area 
A lot of little finger ridges dropping into this. It's brushy, a few open areas. Uh, there's a creek that runs back in there. Um, a real rocky creek. A lot of rock crevices at the base of these ridges. And they really like it here in this field. Well, that's what's going on here. Hopefully it'll take another cat. It's got a lot of odor. And uh, the weather's supposed to be real nice for the next 48 hours before we get a front coming in. So hopefully I'll take another one while his smell's on the area. I got a double set here for bobcats. I've got a trail camera here on the tree just out of your view. Uh, I've been running it for about a week and a half on a beaver carcass right here. I've actually got video clips of multiple bobcats in the frame at the same time. There's at least a breeding pair in here. Uh, at least two bobcats. Uh, so I made two sets here. I have a, a log here at the base of this little hill. I've got a hole dug down in the bottom of the log. I've got some Hiawatha Valley predator, predator bait up inside there on some sheep wool. Got some turkey feathers scattered out the mouth of the hole. I've got some uh, Powder River cat call on top of the log. Traps bedded right here in peat with some grass and leaves over it. Over here on my primary set, this is where I've had the beaver carcass. I nailed a beaver leg to the tree. I put some gland lure here on this broken off limb. It's been broke off for some time. Traps bedded right here, again in peat moss and uh, grass clippings. With a little bit of leaves around. Some stepping sticks. There's still a little bit of the carcass buried right there where bobcats buried it. Um, I've got my my turkey feather back here on a tree, spinning in the breeze. So, got two good sets working here. I know there's at least two bobcats here. Uh, so, I, I feel confident in these sets. This particular set is a trash pile set. It's what I always run here. And he has completely dem demolished my trash pile. I can't even see any remnants of it left. Um, but this is a trash pile set. Uh, usually I put some kind of beaver meat or something in the trash pile. And this particular set I actually had a brook trout. Uh, did some, uh, I do some trout fishing in the spring, stock trout. And uh, I, I never can uh, eat quite as many as what I catch. So ones I have left over that are a year old starting to get freezer burn a little bit I actually come out and use them in my sets this particular cat is not caught really well uh, I've only got him by a couple toes um, so I'm gonna get off here and try my best to dispatch it 
I don't think I'm going to be able to remake this particular set. I don't have anything with me to do it. I'll have to remake it tomorrow. Hopefully things will dry out a little bit overnight. I think it's supposed to clear up tomorrow. Uh, get a remake made then. Uh, run it for another day or two before the, before the weekend warriors come out here. This is a place that I call the Coyote Freeway. It's a uh, real piney ridge up above me here, uh, but alongside the road it's real thick with automotive and briars and honeysuckle and things like that. Down in the bottom there's a creek that's running not too far from this road. Um, there's pines on the opposite ridge over there you can see, and it's real thick on both sides of the road. This is the kind of thing you want to try to find. Uh, it just funnels them right down through this road. Uh, everything that works this ridge comes up through here. I've caught cats here and coyotes here and coons here and, and everything else. It's just a really good spot. Only got two sets in this area. Uh, I caught a about a 35 to 37 pound big male bobcat in one of them yesterday, and I come in here today. I got it touched back up this morning, and I come in here to check the second set, which is a like a trash pile set using hay. And uh, come in and looked, and I see the traps missing. The area is not really tore up. I got a 10 foot cable, it's an 8 inch cable coming over into the brush. And you can see there, we got us a kitty right there in the brush. He's back foot caught. And it's a lot of stickers and stuff in there, a lot of green briar, but I might have to get in there with the catch pole and see if I can't make that a good cat.
And this is a giant tomcat. A lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Definitely in the 30-some pound range. <laughs> 